Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining me today for another live Q&A. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I am a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator. And my YouTube channel here is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I share with you some techniques and tips and tricks that I use every day in my own voiceover business and answer your questions in these weekly live Q&As to help you just get started, right? To answer any questions that come up during the week. Um, to join the community, right? I think we have a nice little community here. And if you're not new here, then you know that every week we have a poll. And today's poll is, what would your dream VO job be? There are some... Um, responses that I've put on the poll for you, but if it's not one of those, feel free to put what your VO dream job is in the chat and let me know what it is if it's not one of those that are selected there. But let's jump on over there really quick. Like, okay, we have 18 votes already. You guys are up and at them. Well, I guess it's not morning everywhere, is it? <laughs> 19 votes. Okay, so uh, dream VO job, we have audiobooks. 32% of you said audiobooks. 5% of you said video games. I'm actually surprised by that. I hear a lot of people asking me questions how to get into video game, uh, like character voices. I think that's that's surprising. I thought it would, that would have been higher. Uh, animation and movies is at 35% of you. And commercials and or TV radio type of commercial reads was uh, 30%. So it's pretty much an even split between commercials and audiobooks. Very small percentage of you said video games. And then the majority said animation and movies. That's pretty cool. Me personally, I wanted to do audiobooks. I like the long form type of narration. So I do a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> audiobooks, e-learning, um, how-tos, medical narration, stuff like that. I do a lot of that in the long-form narration. Wow, now it's an even split between audio... <clears throat> of course, now that I say that, now it's back up to animation and movies. You guys go ahead and vote. But again, if your dream VO job is not one of those options, because I'm only allowed four, um, go ahead and put it in the chat if it's not one of those. I'd like to hear about it. All right, let's hop on over to the comments and see who's here. <clears throat> the frog is here today, of course. <laughs> and then, of course, Robert is here. Good morning, Robert. Uh, how are you today? I am doing great. I've been in hustle mode the last few days. I've had just back-to-back -back audiobooks. And one that I haven't even gotten started on, but I have, um, I'm kind of in rush mode <laughs> to get this last larger one done so I can start this other one. But other than that, it's been, it's been pretty good. <clears throat> Apart from the frog, of course. How are you today, Robert? James is also here. Good morning, James. Thanks for joining. Rustic Hillbilly. Good morning in Oregon. How is the, the weather there in Oregon? Is it still hot? Are you guys getting rain yet? Ashley Brooke is here. Hello, Ashley. How are you? Uh, hey, Angela. I'm brand new to the world of audiobooks and voiceover. I seem to have issues with doing male voices. What are your tips to a newbie looking to expand their vocal range? What I always tell people in... Most of us think of changing tone or pitch even for you know, male to female or female to male, however you want to look at it. And I think it's more so about slightly differentiating the character vo voices, but it's more so about uh, personality. You know, what is the attitude? What are the mannerisms? You know, to fully flesh out a character voice, it really helps to read through the whole dialogue. I don't know if this is an audiobook or like a like a drama voiceover type of a thing, but have a good understanding of who the character is. 
are they like an aristocrat? Are they, you know, are they a boxer? Are there any attributes that are listed for this person? Because all of those things are going to go into you creating the appropriate voice for them. Also, if you have any doubts, ask the rights holder or ask the client. What was their vision for this character? Was there any particular way that they or um, way that they wanted this character to sound or act? You know, but it's not so we always default to tone or pitch, right? Like we go deeper for men's voices and not, not always necessarily the case. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying, you know, I know not everybody has the same sort of voice. My voice is at a register where I can get away with maybe giving it a slightly lower tone, but then speaking a little bit slower, maybe more matter of fact, um, ending your sentences at a low point for males, high point for females. That's always a tip that I hear. But I think it's more about the personality. What is the attitude of the, of the person? What are their mannerisms? All of that stuff's going to come into play for fully fleshing out a character in your mind. And then you could even liken that character to someone that you see on TV or in a movie and then give them that voice in your head, right? And then be that voice. I know it's it sounds like a lot, but that's sort of how I figure it out in my head. But don't get too caught up on, you know, I have to go way down here because that's not, that not necessarily the case. <clears throat> Practice. Practice with different characters. You know, if one thing that I have done in the past, and I don't know if it'll help, but um, once you have a good idea of a character and you can't think of someone like on TV or in a movie that they remind you of, Google the attributes like, I don't know, haughty, aristocratic male in 18th century, whatever it is, right? And then just see what sort of images come up. And then look at that person and go, what would they sound like? What would they, how would they walk around? Would they just, you know, gesticulate a lot? Would they have their nose up at everybody else around them? Whatever it is. And then just make a voice. Give them a voice. Just practice with that. And that'll help you kind of discover voices that you can sustain. Because you got to also got to keep that in mind. Whatever voice you do choose, it's one that you're definitely going to have to sustain and not fry your own voice in the process of doing this voice. And that is believable. Do they have an accent? Do they speak faster, slower? Do they, are they snarky? You know, all of these other attributes you can throw in there to help you differentiate characters versus just tone or pitch. That was very long-winded. I hope that helps. <laughs> Sorry, on a tangent. First tangent of the day. Grant is here. Good morning, Grant. Grant from Columbus, Ohio. Ashley, also good morning. <laughs> good morning, Ashley. Hope all is well. Oh, coffee. Cheers. A little coffee. Michael V, noon here. And James said 10 a.m. Louie Louie is here. Hi, Louie Louie. What's up, everybody? <clears throat> Andy B is here. Hi, Andy. Andy says, is the best case scenario any work that requires minimal processing? Should you shoot for that? Also, is there a limit to the number of gigs you can offer? Um, let me start with the second question. I'm guessing you're talking about like Fiverr. Um, when you first start out as a brand new seller, you have seven gigs, I believe, unless they've changed something that I don't know. You have seven gigs to utilize for Fiverr. And then once you get to level one, I believe you have 10. And then you get to level two, I believe then you have maybe 20. As a top rated seller, you have, I believe, 30. I haven't looked at these in a while. I hope nothing has changed. But you do have a limit depending on what level you are on Fiverr. Um, to uh, for, the number of for the number of gigs that you can offer. But they don't. All of those gigs don't have to be in one category, meaning all of those gigs don't have to be voiceover related or audiobook related. Again, if you have other skills, if you can create, um, 
I don't know, uh, digital art, if you can um, provide photographs, content copy, like if you can create blog posts for somebody or there's a ton of different services you can offer on Fiverr, offer those skills as well. Because you want multiple streams of income and not just on Fiverr too. You want to diversify your income from different sources. You don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket, but within Fiverr, utilize some of those other gigs if you have other skills that you can deliver in a digital form, right? Something that you can deliver in a digital way. Offer those skills as well. You know, if you know how to create PowerPoints or Excel spreadsheets or there's tons of stuff that you can do. Uh, on Fiverr. Um, but as far as work that requires minimal processing, you want to do minimal processing anyway, just about on anything. Don't apply an effect because you heard somewhere that somebody said to use it, right? If there's something that I have said in one of my videos that I, that I personally use, and if you have the same situation, then I recommend that you use it. But if you don't need an effect like noise reduction, if you have a naturally low noise floor, you don't audibly hear ambient noise in your recordings, don't use noise reduction. If you don't have um, mouth clicks, and if you do, you're the luckiest voiceover artist in the world. But if you don't have mouth clicks, then don't use mouth declick. If your mic is in a position where you don't have any plosives coming through, you know, the puffs of air that go into the microphone that make that sound, right? If you have your mic positioned in a way that you don't have to deal with plosives, don't use a deplosive. If you don't need an effect, don't use it. Because all of that stuff just takes away from the natural sound of your voice and your environment. It does, it does more harm to the audio file it can enhance for sure, but too much can definitely make it sound worse or take away some natural frequencies of your voice and make it sound tinny, right? So um, minimal processing is always ideal. But, and even in some instances, you'll have clients that tell you not to do any processing because they may have an audio engineer in-house that will do the processing the way that they need it to be. So that goes to... I guess, not applying any effects that you don't need, A, and B, always read the description of the job or the requirements, the tech specs, anything that comes along with it to make sure that you fully understand what it is the client needs. Tangent number two. <laughs> I hope that makes sense, Andy. John says, good morning, Angela and everyone. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining today. Michael V says, I would like to do narration for shows like How Is Made or Hit. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I wish I had more options than just the four poll answers because that is one of the things that I want to do too. You know, when you're watching um, the History Channel or the Travel Channel or, you know, and they have, um, what's the show I'm thinking of? Ancient Aliens. <laughs> and you have the narrator, you know that goes through the entire, that kind of walks the, the watcher through the entire show. I would love to do something like that too, but there wasn't, there really wasn't a way to put that in there specifically, but I guess that would go under, I don't know if that would really fit under any of those categories, would it? But yeah, I'd like to do the same, same Michael. Kim says, good morning. Good morning, Kim. Thanks for being here. Uh, Kevin X is here. Hello, Kevin. Thanks for joining. Hello, Angela. I've been following you since your first video. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Some of those older ones are a little weird because I was still learning the software. So sorry about that. And it's really great that you offer your time to show the newbies the ropes. I try. I try. I, again, if you've watched me for any length of time, I always say that I want to pay it forward, right? I want to be just one of the voices that hopefully helps you just to keep moving forward you know, in your voiceover career. And also because this community, I love the community that joins here every week and we, you know, we're a family. So I appreciate you watching my videos. And again, sorry for the first, I don't know, few months of it or something. <laughs> Some of those are pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but welcome, Kevin. Thank you. 
Cindy Neff says, good afternoon. Still hot. What kind of books do you narrate? Um, everything. I have, there isn't a genre I haven't narrated, to be honest. Um, most of the time I do like uh, self-help, women empowerment or women's empowerment, um, autobiographies, um, some romance, but mostly the self-help sort of genre is what I, what I do most. And that's really my wheelhouse. That's what I like to do. Uh, JCCAOL says, I know there is a lot of competition, but cartoons for Marvel in DC would be my dream job. Yeah, I hear that a lot too. So many characters. If you did cartoons, Angela, what characters would interest you? Black Canary, Catwoman, Catwoman for sure. Like Catwoman. Um, I think with my voice, because it is a lower register, and I think I would be, my voice probably would be better suited for more villain, I would think. So Catwoman, um, my gosh, my son is like a Marvel fanatic. I should know more names, but none are popping into my mind. Um, I think I'm mixing up DC and Marvel. <clears throat> oh, gosh, I don't know. That's a good question. Let me think about that. But Catwoman for sure. Catwoman for sure. Grant Bunting says, hi. I'm sure I'll figure this out, but I just got a new mic boom this morning and I'm having a hell of a time mounting my mic to it. Oh, well, that's not good. Um, I know that some of the mic arms have an adapter because you'll find that some mic mounts, like if you have like a shock mount or the mount that the mic sits in that attaches to the mic arm, sometimes have different diameter of thread at the bottom. And that was one of the things that I didn't know going through. So you have to make sure that the thread on your arm is the same size thread on your mic holder or your shock mount, your mic mount. There are adapters that sometimes come with these mic arms, or you can buy an adapter even on uh, Amazon. But which part are you having a hard time with? Is the mic too heavy? Some mics like the Blue Yeti, those are pretty big, heavy mics. And sometimes those mics just don't, they just, you know, the mic arm isn't strong enough or sturdy enough to hold a mic of that size. But um, so I guess one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you're buying a mic arm is to make sure that it's going to be sturdy enough to hold the mic that you're, that you're purchasing and also the thread, the thread size. But um <laughs> With VO equipment, I have always found that, you know, cheap isn't always necessarily good and good isn't necessarily cheap, right? You want to invest, you know, you don't want to get the cheapest thing that you can find because you'll end up having to return it and get something higher priced anyway, because usually the cheaper it is, the cheaper the materials are that it's you that are in it, that are used in it. So you might end up finding yourself fighting with some equipment to work well with the other equipment. So I guess what I'm saying is, is um, can you can you elaborate maybe a little bit? What is what is the problem that you're having with your mic arm? Let's see if we can help you figure that out, because I'm the only things that I'm thinking of are the thread to mount the mic holder. Right. Or if it's just maybe not holding the weight of the microphone, or maybe it's not uh, attaching or clamping onto your desk. What is the, what is the issue you're having with it? Sorry, tangent number three. <laughs> Rustic Hillbilly says, some rain, smoky, but fall is in the air. I've been hearing a lot about the winter, that the winter is supposed to be pretty gnarly this year. Have you guys heard that? Wouldn't surprise me. Sounds nice, though. Uh, James says, regarding male and female voices, Scott Brick has said, the most important thing is that it should be obvious who's talking. Yes, Scott Brick does say that. There are some other narrators that say that as well. And Scott Brick, for example, is one of those narrators that um, the changes in the character voices are very, very subtle. And sometimes they mix together. 
I've heard, what was I just listening to? I think it was uh, Jurassic World that he narrated. And some of the character voices were pretty darn similar, but still with the the context and with this person said, this person said, not just he said, she said, you still knew who was talking with their with the words, you know, that he was saying, with the names that he was saying. So you could still follow along on what was going on, but the character voices were not super different. You know, they were just different attitudes. I don't know if Scott had even changed pitch a whole lot. It was more tone and personality and just slight little attribute tweaks, you know? So I think he's a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier. Thanks for that, James. Uh, Robert says, um, go ahead and make my day. As opposed to a woman saying the same thing. Yeah, as far as male-female voices. That would be a good practice or, yeah, I mean, I guess you could take, you could really do that with any, just grab a, a maybe a famous quote or a famous line and then practice saying it as two different people. Yeah, that might help. Ashley says, greatly appreciate the advice. It definitely helped. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't too much of a tangent. I tend to do that. <laughs> It's given me some new techniques to practice and grow from. Good. Good. Edwin00 says, I love you, Angela, in a healthy professional way and not a creepy stalker way. <laughs> Thank you, Edwin. Thank you for... for... <laughs> Thank you for uh, classifying the way in which you love. I appreciate that. I appreciate and love all of you, too, in a healthy professional way. <laughs> punch fear in the face. Yes, punch that fear in the face. That was funny. Thank you for that, Edwin. Voice over audio Janet says, hi, Angela and everyone else. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining Tim Powers. Hiya, Angela. Hiya, Tim. Thanks for being here. Louie Louie says, pay Angela's website a visit for her VO courses. Thanks, Louie. How did, how did you get a link in there? Oh, you just typed it in. It's not an active link. You guys rock. Thank you so much. Yes, my voice over my voiceover. My website is voiceoverangela.com. I've got all kinds of good stuff on there. I tried to make it sort of like a like a one-stop shop, I guess, or a one-stop place for you to find uh information of all sorts. Like I've got um what do I have? I have a tab that's called the VO workshop and within that I have a group that you can join and chat with other people. There's uh, recommended gear. I have a whole page dedicated to stuff that I have in my studio here. If you're looking for some, maybe some ideas of what kind of gear to buy, stuff that I recommend that I've either personally used, or I know a lot of people who do use it and find it useful. So um, what's some other stuff I have that check out? Oh, my podcast is on there too, which I've sort of neglected a little bit. But I've got a lot of stuff on there, a lot of information. So yes, check out my website. I try to make it. Oh, Louie Louie, did you send me a super sticker? I'm, I'm going to have to go over to the YouTube side and see what the sticker is. What is it? Oh, it's like a little bird. Or is it a bean? What is that? Is that an avocado? What, what is that? That is so funny. I love the super stickers. Hopefully you guys can see it on your end. <clears throat> That's awesome. <laughs> ah, you guys are making me laugh today. Thanks. I did that. Tim Power says, far from a newbie, but here anyway, always good to listen. Good. I appreciate, even if you're not a newbie, you are still welcome here. Join the conversation, right? Join with other VOs and new VOs, experienced VOs, demo producers, whoever you are. Just join the conversation and have a good time here with us. And if you have advice, if you're not new and you have advice for new people, please join in, share the wealth and share the knowledge. It's the same thing that I ask people to do on my Facebook page, the VO Workshop. It's just a group. I've got over a thousand voice actors in there now. 
in all different all different experience levels, right? Uh, tenure levels. I've got podcasters in there even. I've got I've got a new demo producer that just joined uh, yesterday. I've got all kinds of great people in there. And that's what I want. I want everybody to kind of come together and feel that community and help each other. Right? Tangent number four. <laughs> John Carhart is here. Hello. <clears throat> what are your thoughts on outsourcing mastering process for audiobooks? I think that if you know how to do it, offer it as a service to uh, audiobook narrators who might have too many books in queue and don't have time to do it themselves. Or if you need some help from somebody who does, then reach out and find them. Um, Mm, I would think Facebook groups are okay to ask for that kind of help. <clears throat> as long as it's allowed in the group that you're in to solicit help or work, um, it's fine in mine. Or if you need to find somebody for that, for the mastering process for audiobooks, you can find those people on Upwork, you can find them on Fiverr. Um, I'm one of them, but I currently have that gig paused because I'm just too busy with my own books at the moment. But I think that's a great service to either offer or go find if you need help. For sure. I think it's a great thing. You should do it. You should outsource. If you're busy, outsource as much as possible. Sorry, not cat woman, tangent woman. <laughs> I am tangent woman. Today, I am tangent woman for sure. Masonry, masonry construction says, <clears throat> God, the frog. My dream job is to be the narrator in a stage project production of a Christmas story. Oh my gosh, that would be hilarious. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Me too. That would be awesome. Is it Katie? Katie Tenorio says, good morning. How much time the author will give you to read the entire book? A week at least? And how much time do you spend on average recording an audiobook of 100 pages? I, I always tell my authors when they approach me with a page count, I tell them that because of the sizes, sizes of books, the formatting of the books, and font sizes differ greatly from book to book to book, right? If you think about it, you have paperback books that are, you know, about this big. Can you see that about this big? And then you have paperback books that are this big. And then you have hardcover books that are this big. Some books are even like this big, right? Books can vary in size and format and font size. I always say it's you'll get a more accurate quote if you can provide the word count. Because voice actors and audiobook narrators are, their pricing is based on word count for the most part, right? So audiobooks, you want to get the word count, not the page count. But depending on the word count, I'll typically ask my rights holders to give me at least a month if they can, because <clears throat> I typically have more than one in queue. I usually have a revolving two or three, sometimes five at a time. So if I can have that extra time to make sure that not only their book is done, but the person's, the other person's book gets finished up, and then I have the time that I need to read through develop characters if there are some, and to get the book done. But it really depends on the word count. But I would say if it's a children's book, you know, something under a thousand words, you could probably have that done in a matter of days, if not one day, depending on your workload. So there are some other variables to consider, word count and your workload. But yeah, I, I would say tell the rights holder the time that you need. Be transparent. Don't try to be the superhero and say, oh, yeah, I can narrate that 50,000 word book in a week if you can't, you know, don't try to rush it. It's a production and it takes time. For every finished hour, for every finished hour of audio, you have to keep in your mind that that one hour of finished audio could potentially take you anywhere from two to eight hours to do. So. It could take some time. So ask for the time that you need. That's my advice. Tangent number five. 
Voiceover Audio Janet says, I said last week I'd let you know about Audacity, and it only works with the track in it. Duh. <laughs> then the drop-down bars all work. Yeah, that that makes sense. I think um, Audition's the same way. I'm sure Reaper's the same way. They, there's nothing that's usable unless there's something active, a track active to work on. That makes sense. Uh, Jeremy says, is it work Workington? Workington. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. What are your thoughts on writing your own material, then narrating VO your own work? I say do it. If you have the chops, the writing chops, do it. Absolutely. I've been thinking of making my own YouTube videos. Do it. Could that help with getting a foot in the door? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but with my YouTube video, my YouTube channel uh, here on YouTube, <laughs> was I created this channel to help other voice actors get started to provide information, sort of, you know, knowledge that I've gained through my own experiences in voiceover. But through my channel, even though I'm not directing it at clients, clients still find me. And this is how I get some of my audiobook work or rights holders that find me through my YouTube channel. And then they can hear me talking and they maybe I don't know how many videos they watch, but maybe they feel like they can get to know me that way as well. And then they reach out to me and then we work on a book. So a YouTube video, just like any other social media platform, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, any platform where you can have audio or even video, audio and or video audio, you know what I mean, is a great way to introduce yourself to people. To market yourself, to get people to hear what you sound like, and to learn who you are. You know, what kind of person are you to work with? So yeah, absolutely. Do it. <laughs> Louie Louie says, Angela can play Domino, Deadpool's girlfriend. Oh, I love Domino. She's awesome. Wonder Woman, Aquaman's wife. Wonder Woman. Yeah, well, I've definitely got the height. Because she's an Am Amazonian. She's an Amazon, not an Amazonian. She's an Amazon, right? Or from the Amazon. I forget. <clears throat> hey, my son's going to kill me. Mommy, she knew this stuff. Um, okay, okay, one more. She-Hulk. <laughs> she maybe. Maybe. Grant Bunting says, I have a Gator 3000 and a Cinco D2 shotgun. Uh... Okay, shock mount. The problem is both mounts have female ends, so I figure I will need an adapter. Oh, yeah. How? Oh, maybe. Okay, so maybe the arm you have doesn't, yeah, if it doesn't have a male end, yeah. So you will need an adapter, and I'm sure there is one. I'm sure there is one on Amazon for sure. Well, there you go. <clears throat> At least it's a relatively easy fix. It's not like the mic is too heavy and it's, you know, flopping over and you can't get it to stay up or it's, you know, flops over in the middle of recording. That's, you know, this will be a relatively easy fix. Uh, John says, hey, guys, let's all click the little like button for Angela if you haven't already. One, two, three, go. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I love you guys and your senses of humor. You guys are amazing. Oops. Robert says, uh, Grant, look inside the shock mount threads. Is there another threaded looking thing that has slots in it, sort of like a slotted screw? Might have an adapter installed in the shock mount. Oh, that's a great point. I find that most of the, the microphone arms do have some sort of way to, uh, like they provide an adapter of some sort. You just got to look. You know, you got to look around. Uh, sometimes even the shock mounts will come with different adapters as well. But, I mean, at least if you've already determined that they're both female ends, then that's that's a relatively easy fix. But sometimes they do provide adapters. That's a great point, Robert. Louie Louie says, instead of straight out of Compton, Angela's straight out of studio. Yeah, I actually have a t-shirt. <laughs> in the shop on my site that says straight out of the studio. <laughs> a 
Louie Louie says, you can be too. Oh, <laughs> you're talking about that shirt. Louie, you rock. Thank you, Louie. <clears throat> yeah, all the shirts in my shop, all the hats and hoodies in, the sh in my shop, I have personally designed because um, you guys can't see the shirt that I'm wearing, but it says voice actor. You've probably heard me before. I like to wear voice actor shirts while I'm out and about because it's a conversation starter. It's like walking around with a business card on you. I also have shirts with my logo and my website on them that I use when I walk around with. And some people think it's hokey, but I don't because it starts conversations. People go, oh, you're a voice actor. That is so cool. Maybe they are in need of one or thought of something that they could use you for or hire you for that they didn't even think of before until they're presented with the opportunity standing in front of them, shaking their hand, right? And they go, oh my gosh, do you do phone messages? Do you do YouTube video narration? Do you like, yes, I do. I do everything that requires a voice. <laughs> so anywho, I couldn't find a whole lot of shirts out there that I found interesting or entertaining. So I created my own. So I have a shop on my page and everything on there is created or designed by me because I thought they'd be cool. Uh, Kevin says, can you recommend a place we can get a constructive critique of a recording? I have the hardest time getting honest feedback on performances. Yeah, my Facebook group. If you join my Facebook group, a VO workshop, um, the VO workshop, I should say. And I recommend that you post your demos there if you need some other sets of ears, maybe to hear something that you're not hearing. Because when we listen to our own audio recordings, hour after hour, day after day, there's a lot of maybe bad habits or sounds that we just get accustomed to. Hearing them over and over and over again, having fresh sets of ears listen can maybe alert you to something that you didn't even, a problem that you didn't even know was there, or just to give you honest feedback on a performance so you can improve your performances. My Facebook group is the place where you can do that. Absolutely. Uh, Katie says, thank you so much. It was helpful advice. Good. It was probably one of my tangents, right? <laughs> uh, Niru Goel. I hope I'm saying that right. Hi, Angela. Hi. <laughs> Voice over audio Janet says, I'm still trying to work out how to upload audiobooks to YouTube with, of course, a cover photo that runs the length of the audiobook. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have two very short stories recorded and edited. Yep, been busy. <clears throat> Gosh, goodness. Sorry, guys. Um, upload audiobooks to YouTube with a cover photo. So depending on the video software that you're using, if the cover photo is just a static image, you can run that, extend that image to run the entire length of the audio. I would recommend if you're going to do uh, upload an audiobook to YouTube, do it by chapter. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and then have a different thumbnail, of course, saying, okay, this is chapter one, this is chapter two and then upload them that way. That might be uh, a better listening experience than to get people to come back and watch another video, um, which helps the algorithm, right? Um, other than that, I'm not sure. Well, I guess if they're short stories, you could do, you know, one short story, second short story, third short, you know, different videos in that way. But um, what video editing software are you working with? I think most of them work pretty similar in that respect. You just extend that static image to run the length of the audio and then export them all together. Uh, Melena Lopez says, hello, super excited to see you. I'm super excited that you're here. Thank you for joining. Um, Niru Goel, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that, says, thank you so much for uploading your videos. Great help. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for watching them. Voice over Van Dean. Yes, the frog has already made the appearance, a few appearances, several appearances today. 
But that's not the frog's fault, I think. That is my fault. I had, like I said earlier, I had a lot of uh, narrating to do yesterday. And I think I might have pushed a little too hard. And I got a lot more to do today. So I'll definitely be hitting that fire cider. <laughs> and uh, some more coffee. <laughs> Malena says, can I use my auditions for demos? And should you add music to auditions? Yes, you use your you can use auditions for demos. Most of the time, the clients um, on their end will sign an agreement stating or there's something usually in the terms of service somewhere that say that you can use your auditions as demos. If you want to be double, triple, quadruple sure that you can use that material, then just ask. You know, if you're in a place where you're not quite sure if you can use your auditions for demos, then ask the rights holder if you can. But I think most of those places where you upload auditions already give you permission to use them as demos. I did. You know, why not? In terms of music, there's a lot of people with differing opinions on this. I have both. I have demos that have music and sound effects, like the whole, like something you would see or hear on TV. And then I have demos that are just me. Depending on what the client is using the voiceover for, I think if it's something that is traditionally a music or sound effects is used with, then those sorts of things in your demo are okay. It also adds to like the professional sound and it gets the customer, the customer, the client li uh, listening to it gets them excited, kind of sets the stage for the tone that you're delivering in that particular demo. And you could also have demos that are just your voice, which I think some clients would probably appreciate that too. Just to hear what you sound like and what kind of audio quality that they can depend on you to deliver, right? So they can have an idea if you have a ton of ambient noise in your room or if you have a beautiful vocal fry that they're looking for which is sort of what I'm doing now. Maybe not beautiful, but it's kind of a fry, right? So they can hear your voice without anything else going on. So I think both could be appropriate depending on what the job is and what the client needs it for. I hope that makes sense. Niru says, I love the way you pronounce my name. Well, I hope it's right. <laughs> I'm glad that you like it, but I hope it's right, because the last thing I want to do is offend people. <laughs> All right, so let's go check out the poll really quick. So again, today's poll was, what is your dream VO job? And I know there's only four responses on there, but I can only add four responses. That's all I could put on there. So right now, holy Moses, we have 56 votes. 34% uh, of you said audiobooks. So audiobooks is the winner at the moment. 4% of you said video games, which I'm still very surprised about given the amount of questions that I get about how do I get into video games. I'm surprised that only 4% of you said that that is your dream VO job. Animation and movies is 30%. And commercials, TV, radio is 32 So almost a pretty even split between audiobooks, animation, movies, and commercials, TV, radio. And I did think about adding like a cable channel narrator. You know, I, how would you even word that? What would you call that? I'm sure there's a word for it. I just don't know what that is. But like, you know, to be the voice of ancient aliens or uh, National Geographic or Animal Planet or the Discovery Channel, that would be pretty awesome too, I think. So, and of course, if one of these options is not your VO dream job, put it in the chat. I want to hear what it is. What is your dream VO job? <clears throat> All right, let's go back over to the comments. We got a few more. Uh, we've got another maybe 15 minutes or so. Okay, so let's see if we can get some of these questions answered. VoiceOver Audio Janet says, Audacity for editing, and now looking for what software I need to download for uploading to YouTube. <clears throat> hmm. 
what is the new one that just came out? CapCut? Maybe it just didn't come out, but I just heard of it recently. Is that for mobile only? Or can you use CapCut on a desktop? Because I saw my partner using that the other day to make an Instagram video. And man, that looked really awesome. But there's a lot of video editing software out there. Some of them are free. I know Canva now added a video. Is it Canva? I don't want to say something wrong. But there's a there's a lot more coming out, it seems, every day. Storyblocks, the website that I use for my digital assets, my music, sound effects, stock images, stuff like that, video footage, has now a video editor in it with, as well. But you can find idiot, video editing software just about anywhere. But um, I even have a video. I have a video here on my channel about video editing software. I just remembered that. That was a while ago. So I'm sure there's a few more that have been added since then. But does anybody know about CapCut? Is that mobile only or is that desktop? Because that looked really cool. But to answer your question, Janet, there's well, not really a question. You were just sort of making a statement. But to add on to it, there are quite a few out there video editing softwares. And some of them are free. Phil said, hey, Angela, is there a particular app you use for invoices for your clients? For example, which app do you use for PF, PF, PFH rates on ACX? I'm having a tough time today. I use um, <clears throat> PayPal Business for my invoices. You can also use uh, QuickBooks. QuickBooks has invoices. There's a few other websites out there that I'm thinking of, but I'm now that I'm thinking of them, I think they might be more for photography. But there's a few different websites out there, not websites, services out there that serve as like a CRM. Um, and you can also send invoices, things of that nature. But I just say business, PayPal business is what I use. That's a great way to kind of keep track of everything. Plus, it integrates with QuickBooks, which definitely helps during tax time. So I use PayPal business <clears throat> for my invoices. Milena Lopez says, yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Tom has voice. Hi, Tom. I think her issue might be that she might be wanting to upload her stories as audio. She needs to edit it and upload the file to YouTube as a video file with an extended picture, as you mentioned. Yeah. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. Um, you can use any audio that you have to make a video out of it. You just need some sort of a static image, just an image, and then make it cover that image, cover the entire audio. So the picture won't move, but your audio will be attached to it. That way you have, you can effectively make an MP4, which is a video, right? It's a video file format. Absolutely. VoiceOver Audio Janet said, spent hours and hours learning Audacity's system. Big learning, <clears throat> big learning curve for sure. Many notes were taken and still learning. Yeah, there's any DAW, any DAW that you choose is a big learning curve. If you're unfamiliar with audio lingo or term terminology, it's anything you learn for the first time is going to be difficult. And there's usually a big learning curve for just about anything new, especially if it's very involved and technical, like a DAW is, it's going to take some time. I'm still learning new things about mine, and it's been over four years now. Yeah, a little, yeah, well, over four years. Wow. Yeah, I've been using Audition for a long time, and there's still new stuff being introduced, or stuff that I didn't even know that was there. And I'm like, man, why didn't I know about this years ago? Right? Yeah, still learning, always learning. It's not a bad thing. Ashley says, how long did you practice at first before recording and sending in your first audition? Ooh. Hmm. Uh, I want to say that I practiced a lot. Maybe a few a few run throughs first out loud to myself before hitting that record button, and then probably a few more takes after recording, just to, just to deliver it a few different ways, and then listen back later and see which which one of those takes I liked best. But I didn't I didn't wait until I felt 
ready. Because waiting until you feel ready is sort of like procrastinating. learning. It's an excuse. It's an excuse we tell ourselves. It's, I can't do this until I'm here or until I have this thing or until I have achieved this or there or wh whatever that is that you're waiting for before you move forward is just like procrastinating. learning, right? I have to learn more of this before I can do this. That is procrastinating. learning. But it, I didn't want to put myself in that space. I wanted to just keep pushing forward, making myself step outside of my comfort zone and just try it. Just do it, right? And if I have, if I miss out on that, if I don't get that job, then so be it. It wasn't meant for me. But I know that I gave it my best with what I know at that moment, right? The best that I feel that it could be at that moment. So you can't get too caught up in, well, I haven't practiced enough or I don't know my DAW well enough. Submit the audition with the best that you have at that moment. Of course, if you're hearing noise or if you, you know, if there's something wrong with the audio, something that you think still needs work, then don't, you know, don't submit it then. But if you're happy with the recording and then you know it's the best that you can do, then submit it. So I wouldn't say super long. I didn't practice a whole lot, but I gave it probably a few read throughs and then a few takes while recording. And then I listened back and chose the best one. But, you know, it's really easy to just get caught in that. Well, maybe I should wait until this date or until I have this thing or until I have, you know what I mean? Just do it. Just do it. Louie Louie says, say, Angela in the house, how about a preview video of the audio equipment you use along with affiliate links for purchases? Um, a preview video of the audio equipment you use? I actually have, I actually have a few videos here on my channel. Yeah, I'll have to figure out how to add, I think you can add a, like a trailer to the end of a live or something like that. I'm still learning YouTube. I'm still learning how to do all of this stuff. So I think that you can do that. But if you're interested, I do have a few videos here on my channel where I go through some recommended gear for you to use in for either voiceover or audiobooks because they're essentially the same. But I mean, if you're looking for some recommendations on stuff, I have a few videos here and then I have that whole page on my website, the VO gear tab, where that's all dedicated to stuff that I recommend that you use that I've either personally used or know that works really well. And then there are affiliate links within that page. So if you purchase something from one of those um, items on my page, then I get a small commission from it. So, but I do have that. Is that what you mean, Louie? I think that's what you mean. Is that what you mean? I hope so. Uh, Nehru Goel. I hope I'm, am I saying that right? Because I don't want to keep mispronouncing your name. What to do to avoid mouth clicks? Oh, not speak. <laughs> mouth clicks. There are some people that say hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Some people will say green apples because the tartness and the citrus will help clear all that stuff out. Brushing your teeth right before a shot of whiskey. There's all kinds of people that will tell you their home remedies for mouth clicks. But I think being a human being with just saliva in your mouth, not to be gross, but it's just part of being human and having a mouth. They're hard to remove 100% of the time from 100% of your project. So there are plugins that you can use. Um, the one from Isotope, the mouth declick from isotope.com has a, is a worth its weight in gold. Let me tell you, it's only available in the two higher packages for Isotope. Um, RX 10, I should say, is the audio repair bundles that you want, RX 10, but worth it. Totally worth it. Over and over again, 100% of the time, worth it because it will reduce its that particular plugin, there's a D-click and there's a mouth D-click. The mouth D-click is looking for non-digital sound 
of clicks, which are human mouth clicks. The D click is looking for digital clicks like feedback or bumps or um, interruptions in internet signal in an audio file. The mouth D click is made for specifically for that, you know, that noise that makes us all just cringe. <laughs> so that is a great plugin for mouth for re reducing mouth clicks in your audio. Um, and if you get some, how to remove them without affecting the audio quality. That is the best way. Isotope RX10 mouth D click plugin is worth its weight in gold a hundred times over. But if you have a um, a DAW, if you use a DAW like Adobe Audition, I don't know if Reaper does this, but there's a way to see mouth clicks in the spectral view of Adobe Audition. And then you can take a little healing brush and just erase them out if you wanted to. So depending on what DAW that you use, you can use mouth declick plugin in conjunction with a little bit of healing for, you know, the big clicks that didn't get automatically removed with the plugin. Or you can remove them manually. It's difficult either way, but um, definitely the plugins will help you to reduce your time in editing. But there isn't a way to completely stop them, in my experience. Some of us just have sticky mouths and it is what it is you just do your best with what you have uh melena says how do you handle auditions in different time zones the same way i handle auditions just about anywhere because what we do is on a global scale we have global clients so sometimes a client on the other side of the world from you is going to ask for an audition and you're asleep so you just reach out to them as soon as you see the message or the invitation or whatever it is and say, I'll, I'll have this for you as soon as possible. Good morning. I just woke up or, you know, however you want to present it. And then as soon as you get into the studio, send the audition. But I think most of the clients know this. They know that um, auditions are going to come from all over the planet, all at different times. So I wouldn't get too caught up in, oh my gosh, you know, they're three hours ahead. They're going to hate me. Don't think about any of that. Just submit it as soon as you can. Uh, Voice over audio, Janet says audiobooks for or for audacity for learning audacity. Is that what you're talking about? Um, Tom Tom Hess says I would call it docu series narration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I think that works. That fits for the narrator for uh, cable channels, for sure. Uh, Klaus says uh, to Niru Goel, I hope that's right, <laughs> enough to drink before Isotope RX for after. There you go. So hydrate, 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 and then use a plugin, a good mouth declick plugin like RX10 mouth declick from Isotope. Voice over audio, Janet says, I found a place called Veep, but not sure. Still looking. That Veep, that's a that's a new one. I haven't heard of that one for making video. Um, Michael V says, I'm going to try DaVinci Re Resolve for uh, Janet. I think that was one of the one of the video editing editing softwares that we looked at on the video that I mentioned earlier about video editing software was DaVinci Resolve. And I've heard that a few times, a few people use that. I personally use Premiere Pro because I have the whole Adobe suite. So I have Audition and Premiere Pro, After Effects, all of that stuff. Um, Edwin says, hey, Angela, in your setup, are you using Audio Mute or Auralex? I am talking to them both for my, talking to them both for my closet setup. Are there any important questions I should ask that you wish you knew? Oh, that's a, a great question. I don't have either of those. I don't have any kind of um, sound dampening material in here at all. I actually have good bones. I got lucky with good bones in here. And I have the walls covered with um, moving blankets to reduce the reverb. So my booth isn't completely soundproof, but I only have like an occasional airplane. Sometimes the kids are out there playing on the playground, but I've pretty much got my schedule down to not be in here or just editing when the kids are playing outside. 
Um, the dogs luckily don't bark as much. So I'm pretty lucky throughout the day with getting stuff done and not needing sound dampening material. So I don't personally use it. Um, so I don't really have much experience with it. So I apologize for that. But I know there are several videos on YouTube, probably a whole lot more than several, that go through just these um, manufacturers and could probably tell you quite a bit more than I could in that respect. So I wish I had an answer for you. I just don't. I'm unfamiliar with these because I don't use them. Um, Voice over audio. Janet says that Michael thinks. I'll look at that one as well. Yeah. Uh, da Vinci Resolve. JCC AOL says, when it comes to female supervillains, I could see you doing Catwoman, but also Black Cat. In addition, I could see you doing Poison Ivy, Punchline, Huntress, Rose Wilson, and Nightshade. What is the... What is like the, she's like a witch or something from, is it DC? It starts with an M. Who am I thinking of? There was a movie. She was at uh, Suicide Squad. She was in, who am I thinking of? Uh, and Oh, and it's not an M. It's Enchantress. Where did I get an M from? Enchantress? Maybe. I could see. <gasps> Poison Ivy. I could definitely see. Cool. Oh, looks like we have another super chat. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. I appreciate you. Uh, a client bought a VO from my Fiverr a few months ago, claiming it was for a video on their website. They are now using it in a TV commercial without the rights. Do you have advice on this? Um, I would reach out to them and say, hey, um, you need full broadcast rights for this. And if they don't, and then send them an offer for it. Or you could go straight to Fiverr customer support. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could also get a, an attorney in, involved. But I would start with Fiverr and the client and say, hey, especially if you have all of that verbiage saved, you know, if you had discussed rights and they said, no, we're not doing we're not doing this. So we don't need the rights. Then you have definitely some legs to stand on. But first, I would approach the client and then Fiverr or both. And then go from there. But definitely they need to purchase rights for the correct purpose. Uh, the usage of your voice, for sure. That's what I would do. I'm sorry that happened to you, Troy. That really stinks. And thank you for the super chat. Hang on. I have a, I have a banner for that. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> I just wanted to use that. But thank you, guys. There's so many buttons. I've got so many buttons here and don't get to use them all. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, where are we? Filmora. Uh, Tom says, Filmora Wondershare is great. Small learning curve and lots of tools. I don't think I touched on that one. But that would be another one to take a look at. Louie Louie says, my dream is to voice act for popular animated cartoon series and movies. Yeah, that would be That would be fun to be... Uh, a character on a cartoon show. That would be fun. Louis Louis says, hey, Angela, become a VO agent and throw me on the roster. Oh, no, I wouldn't be a VO agent. I think that, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I like, I like, I'm too much of an introvert for that, I think. But I appreciate that, Louis. Michael V says, procrastinate learning. I forgot about that when I'm guilty. We, we're all guilty of procrastinate learning at some point. It's fear, it's fear of moving forward. You know, I'm going to stay right here where I'm comfortable learning stuff because I don't know enough to get here. So I'm going to keep myself or hold myself back until I feel ready, right? It's a form of fear. And we all do it. We're all guilty of it. It's just recognizing it and punching that fear in the face and moving forward, right? VoiceOver Audio Janet says, there's so much to learn about everything with doing voiceovers. There is, there's a lot. I have to admit that I'm not much for practice. I feel that it's going to come along as you go. And a lot of it does. But as you go along, what are you doing? You're practicing. So you can practice a lot now and then keep practicing as you go along. It will definitely help. But there is a lot to learn for this business. Any business, really. 
Voice over audio Janet says, experience begins when you start and is acquired by some type of action. I am a jump right in there kind of person. Thanks so much all, for all the help. Love coming to this group. Actually, look forward to it. Oh, really? I look forward to this uh, every week, too. I love that you guys spend the time and I appreciate your time. There's so many other things you could be doing with your day and you're spending an hour here with me and the rest of the VO group. So I, I appreciate you guys coming here and that you look forward to it. That's, oh, it's so humbling. <laughs> Thank you for that. You make me all teary eyed. Tom Hess, the voice says, drink enough whiskey and you won't care if you're clicking. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much you're going to care about anything. Brooke Simmons says, do you use punch and roll recording? And if so, about how much time does it save you over a full edit of a raw recording? My current setup doesn't allow for it. So I'm trying to decide whether to upgrade. I don't use punch and roll. I've tried to. I'm not. I just don't think I'm coordinated for it. I don't have the patience for punch and roll. I'd rather just not stop what I'm doing and start over. I would rather just keep going in the frame of mind that I'm in. I actually use the clicker method, right? So if I make a mistake, I use the clicker and I just keep going. But the other nice thing about that is that when I go back through and edit later, which in the scheme of things is not super time consuming, but at the same time, I'm also looking for stuff that shouldn't be there. Like if, you know, somebody outside said something and the mic picked it up, I can see that and get rid of that anyway. But with the clicker method, it turns out at the end, I'll have several takes of whatever it is that I was redoing. So sometimes I even like the second take instead of the last take better in the context of what was just happening. So I say do whatever editing method works best for you because we're not all programmed the same. We're gonna do different things different way, uh, the way that's most appropriate for you and your business. I think it's a pretty even split of people doing the punch and roll method versus the clicker method. And you do whatever you wanna do, do whatever works best for you. I just, I'm not coordinated enough for punch and roll and I don't have the patience for punch and roll. I don't wanna stop what I'm doing, I wanna keep going and then come back to it later. Um, Voice over audio, Janet says, no, you asked us to put our dream job in here, Angela. Oh, for audiobooks. Yeah, if, if one of the options I gave you in the poll is not listed, then put that in um, the chat. But I'm only, I only had like four options for the poll responses for audiobooks. So that's your dream, audio, Voiceover audiobook Janet. James says, I've heard that shotgun mics are better for small spaces than large diaphragm condenser mics because of the smaller polar pattern. I would have to agree. My space here is a five by six room, and I use a shotgun mic because of its small pattern. Because with the noise that I do sometimes experience outside of my studio, because it's the dog barking next door. See, it's not all the time, but every once in a while. Um, because my unit here is facing a playground and people walk by, there's a couple parking lots nearby. So there's usually a lot of traffic outside. But a mic, a shotgun mic is going to pick up only what's in front of it. Not so much here, not so much here, and definitely not back here. It's all, you know, laser focused pretty much on wherever I point it. And so it's pointing at my mouth. So it's going to pick up my voice more than anything else around it, as, as opposed to another, like a, dia, um, a, a different kind of like a condenser mic has a different, like a heart-shaped pickup pattern. So it's going to pick up a little over here, a little over here, maybe not so much behind it, but it's going to pick up more ambient room than a shotgun mic will. But yeah, that's one of the reasons why I chose the shotgun mic. And because I had, I also had a Rode uh, NT1A in here as well. And the, sh the Sennheiser sounds a lot better than I, than I think the Rode did. And I think maybe because it's a Sennheiser, A, <laughs> and B, because it's a shotgun mic, I think. That's my personal opinion. 
Brooke says, also regarding Nehru's question, Audacity has a repair function, which can remove short clicks very well, but only very short. And it's not nearly as versatile as the healing brush in Premiere Pro. Yeah, I think some of the DAWs are going to have similar features and effects in them, but they're not all going to work the same way or be as effective as, you know, um, a different one. But I think I can tell you with absolute confidence that Isotopes RX10, mouth declick, and yes, I did upgrade to RX10. I had RX7 forever, and I just upgraded to RX10, uh, is worth its weight in gold, is one of the best mouth click remover plugins ever. And a lot of people would echo the same. Nehru says at Klaus, thanks. You got a lot of attention today, Nehru. You got a lot of people trying to help you out. That's great. Louie Louie says, Dr. Louie in the house recommends Angela to copy and paste her gear suggestions in her video descriptions from now on, like the video if you agree. Uh, my gear suggestions in the descriptions. I guess I could do that. I guess I could do that. Louie Louie says, big shout out to Troy. Yeah, thank you for the super chat, you guys. I appreciate that. JCC AOL is, it is Enchantress. I could also see you doing Raven. Oh, Raven. <laughs> yes, I know Raven. We watched a lot of uh, Teen Titans here. I know she's a Titan. She's a teenager, but she is dark and moody. Yeah, she's also like um, uh, the child of a demon, I think, or something, right? Yeah, I know Raven. Nehru says, please continue to pronounce my name the way you were doing. I simply love it. Oh my gosh. See, now I'm now I'm nervous that I'm saying it wrong and you're just being sweet and letting me just butcher it over and over again. <laughs> gosh. Edwin says, oh, I forgot, Angela. What do you think of the Sennheiser MK600? Thank you so much. And you are awesome and keep shining. Am I shining? Probably because it's hot in here. <laughs> it's warm. Um, the Sennheiser MKE 600, I don't know. I haven't used it. I haven't personally used it. I don't know many people that have. So I don't really know, to be honest. I don't know. Are they expensive? I bet you Booth Junkie has a video on the Sennheiser MKE 600. He's got a video on everything. And if you don't know who Booth Junkie is, that's Mike Delgadio. He has a channel here on YouTube called Booth Junkie. And he does a lot of comparisons of microphones and other kinds of gear. He does some interviews, I think, as well. He has a very good channel on educating about the different sounds of microphones and um, giving his opinions on tech. Very good channel. I definitely recommend checking that out. Troy says, thanks for the help, Angela. I appreciate you, too. Thanks, Troy. Katie says, have happened to you that somebody has recognized you because of your voice, maybe in the supermarket, the park or other place. I have, I have had somebody come up to me in a restaurant once and say that they watched my YouTube channel, that they've, they watched my YouTube channel and then they, you know, met me in person, which was, which was kind of humbling. It was very, it was really cool. Um, and yes, I have. I've had somebody, I think, I think it was here on YouTube that they heard me. Uh, I did, um, I recorded the, the phone tree for their veterinary clinic in their area. And they called the veterinary clinic. And that was me answering the phone, <laughs> uh, directing them to the appropriate um, department. Um, I did a sort of a, uh, the purge sort of an announcement for the coronavirus. Um, it's sort of like, it was like a prank kind of a video that's here also here on YouTube. And that video has been all over the place. It was on, it was used on uh, pranking people on TikTok, uh, other YouTube channels. That was pretty cool. And then it's been referenced a lot too. And people, I have had clients contact me and said, hey, I heard you on that coronavirus purge announcement. And I want you to do something similar for me. That happens to me over and over and over. But um, that's about it. I mean, if you think about all of the people in the world, I mean, the, the probability of somebody passing you on the street and saying, hey, I know your voice are probably very small unless you're doing a lot of commercial work. And even then, it's probably not often. I don't know. But that's about it. I mean, I'm small potatoes, really, you know, relative to some of the others. 
for sure. But those are my only experiences, and those were pretty cool. Troy says, the added strangeness is in the description of the video they credit uh, an odd voiceover studio that I suspect farms cheap voiceovers from Fiverr and resells them posing as an agency. Uh, they credit an odd voiceover studio that I suspect farms, farms cheap voiceovers? What are we talking about, Troy? Oh, the client that stole your work. Not stole your work. I shouldn't say stole your work. They didn't pay for the appropriate rights for the work that you did. So if that's the case, then they probably know very well what they need in terms of rights. They just don't want to do them. So I would, if you don't think you're going to get far with the client, working with the client on this issue, I would get with Fiverr and let them know what's going on. I've heard there's been some instances where Fiverr has stepped in and helped in that respect. Uh, Joy says, hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm super late. It's okay. We just were sitting here wondering where you were for the last hour. But that's okay. I'm glad that you could join. My dream is to be a voice actor in an animated series or movie. But I think starting with audiobooks is a great way to start. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think so. I think in my humble opinion... If you can get audiobooks down, everything else is pretty much cake. <laughs> Not only because of the tech specs, but because audiobooks are so varied. There's such a wide variety of types and characters and, you know, the acting ability. There's, if you can do audiobooks, then you can pretty much do anything else, I think. So I would agree. That's how I started. I started with audiobooks and then moved to everything else. The sort of branched out slow to other stuff. For sure. Uh, Louis says a great question, Katie. Uh, Brooke Simmons says, any suggestions for removing a phone vibrate from a recording? I have RX-9. I missed one when recording a chapter and I'm trying to avoid re-recording a pickup, but maybe hopeless. I would re-record it. <laughs> Uh, you can probably surgically remove it, but I find that with any kind of noise like that, especially if it's running through dialogue, removing that particular noise frequency from your voice is going to take away from that same frequency of your voice, making it sound very hollow. So <clears throat> in that instance, I would just re-record it. That's me. <clears throat> voiceover audio janet says i don't want much most likely due to being 59 now my fun would come from just doing audiobooks for a nominal fee every month a few jobs here and there would be great yeah why not i mean it's a fun way to spend your time and then you get you know money to boot a little side hustle i like it louis says this is a test this this is a test. Yeah, that I do those purge type of um, broadcast announcements sort of things. I do those a lot. Wolf Donovan says, I literally just got started last week. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the family. I got a Fiverr gig the other day <clears throat> after I put up my gig. I'd love to do commercials and trailers. I have uh, an NT1A that picks up everything. What is a better mic? The NT1A is a good mic. I mean, there's tons of mics out there, but as far as mic goes, that's a good mic. I think it's just a matter of tweaking your effects or maybe finding a better place to record in. If you're getting a lot of noise, it might be a noisy environment. Take a really hard look around at your recording space. I think your recording space above the microphone, above anything else, your recording space is one of the most important aspects of your business. Your space is paramount. Take a look around. And if you have hard surfaces in your, in your space, like bare walls, your desktop, your glass computer monitor, if you're, if you're an older monitor, anything in your room, the back of the door, ceiling, floor, anything that's hard and smooth is going to be reflective. It's going to, your voice is a vibration and it's going to bounce around the room that you're in and then into the mic. The mic's going to pick up all of the bouncing too, which creates echo, right? 
So take a hard look at your space and make sure that everything is covered or at least you've got enough treated, right? If you can't cover every single surface in your room, that's okay too. Just, you know, cover it with some acoustic foam or some DIY panels. There's a lot of videos here on YouTube that walk you through how to make those. You know, put a couple up, do a test recording and listen back. And if it solves the problem, great, stop there. And if you still hear issues, then put up some more panels, do another test recording. It's all trial and error just to try to find the best solution that works for you. But your space is more important than your microphone. Absolutely. All right. I got to get back to work. So let's let's get through some of these last questions here. Niru says, yes, Booth Junkie is indeed good. And you are so sweet appreciating another voice artist. Of course. I'm not the... I would never say that I'm the only one or the only one that shares information. I'm not, I don't hold the monopoly on, you know, having a, an informative YouTube channel. I, I say informative. I hope it's informative. I've been told it's informative, so I'm just going to go with that. But yeah, of course, I always give credit where credit is due. Of course. Um, uh, Khan, Khan Farhan? Salam from, K uh, is it Qatar? I always pronounce that one wrong. Please come for FIFA World Cup, be my guest. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't leave my studio. <laughs> I don't go anywhere. I, I, I stay here. I don't go anywhere. Sorry, but I appreciate the offer. Daniel Buttery says, new to VO, but my home studio is set up nicely. I have a professional quality sound, but my Fiverr page gets two clicks per week. My thumbnail looks okay, but could be better. How to edit for more clicks. Um, also, promoting your gig off of the platform is going to help. You can share your gig on social media, your website. Drawing traffic to your gig is definitely going to help your traffic. And also, readjusting your title and your thumbnails as well. Not your thumbnails, your uh, tags the tags associated, it's a numbers game. The more impressions you can get, the more clicks you're going to get. So, and then, sub, you know, subsequent to that, more orders. So, you have to get more traffic to your gigs in order to get more clicks. So, sharing your gig off platform is going to help. Your thumbnail is definitely going to help get you more clicks as well. Having your best sounding demo as the very first audio sample on your on your gig is going to get more people to click into your gig as well. Um, it's really trial and error. You know, try changing up your title and your tags. If you're happy with your thumbnail, then leave it. But getting more impressions leads to more clicks, leads to more orders. It's numbers. It's sales, sales numbers for sure. Um, and then Khan says, do you meditate? Yes, probably not as often as I should, but I do. Does it help to be a better narrator if you connect to the supreme power who created us and give us beautiful voice? It does. It, if, you med if you want to record meditations, it definitely helps to meditate yourself or at least listen to the music. Get into the practice of deep breathing. The more you understand about what it is that you're creating is definitely going to help it to sound as it should, or to lead the person listening through <clears throat> the meditation as it should. So yes, it definitely helps to understand it better if you do it yourself. Same thing goes with audiobooks. If you want to narrate audiobooks, I recommend you listen to audiobooks. Definitely helps. Robert Palmore says, for an unwanted noise, truck passing, plane, phone buzzing, you can do what is called a punch in and just record over the injured part of the recording. Yes. And if you don't know how to do that, you could also re-record re that section that needs to be re-recorded on a separate file, process it, copy, and then paste it in. You could do that too. But I would definitely re-record over a phone buzzing. And then in the future, turn all of your notifications off on your phone. Wolf Donovan says, thank you. I love watching your videos. Good info in a chill way. I try. It's what I was going for. You know, more community and sort of hanging out, but then supplying information as I know it are stuff that I have learned, right? Knowledge that I have learned 
as I went along in my own journey. So I appreciate that. That's what I was hoping for. I don't I want to be too pushy. <laughs> it is what it is, right? You guys just soak in all the information that you can because there's so many different levels of experience and opinion and perspective out there. <clears throat> so if you listen to all of it, take it all in, use or apply what you or use what applies for you and then leave the rest, right? Use what works for your business the way you run, want to run it and then leave the rest. That's what I did anyway. Um, Louis Louis says, give us a line in villain voice before you leave. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Let me think about that while we get through the, these last questions. Joy says, thank you for your time, Angela. Thank you for being here, Joy. I appreciate you. Brooke says at Robert Palmore, thanks. I definitely wouldn't re-record the whole chapter. Yeah. Just, just that little piece of, you know, maybe just that sentence perhaps. I just hoped Angela would say, oh, yes, RX-10 has the iPhone buzz removal plug-in. <laughs> I wish it did. That would be awesome. I wouldn't put it past them. I bet you they'll have something like that in the future because they have a plug-in for everything. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would just re-record that sentence, I think. Brooke says, thank you so much for your time today, Angela. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brooke, for being here. And thank you, Daniel. Thank you, all of you, for being here today. Um, I can't think of a villain line. Oh my God, you guys are putting me on the spot. I can't, I can't think of one. Oh my gosh. See, now my introvert's screaming at me. I can't, I can't do it. You got you're staring at me. <laughs> Ashley says, uh, thank you, Angela. I see you next. I'll see you next week. You helped me a lot. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you guys find this helpful. Louie, I can't believe you put me on the spot. Now I'm all, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. I don't know. Give me a line. Give me a line. And maybe, maybe I can do like a Maleficent or something. Oh, here we go. Oh, wait. Katie says, thank you. High five. <laughs> Brooke says, okay, here's my line. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> I'm so nervous. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Does that work? No? Probably no, probably not. I'm, I'm nervous. Affiliate Power Source says, same bet time, same bet channel. Yes. Robert says, punch fear in the face and just do it. I know, I know, I did, and it probably really stunk, but yeah, I'm nervous, camera on me. But I appreciate you guys. Khan says, thank you very much. Lots of blessings and good wishes always. Same to you, Khan. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Melina says, thank you so much. Cannot wait to see you again. Niru, please tell me how to pronounce your name. I don't want to go on mispronouncing it, even though you like it. <laughs> thank you so much, Angela. Enjoyed the session. Voice over audio, Janet says, thanks, Angela, cyber hugs. Oh, that actually gave me creeps. What, the cyber hugs? <laughs> or, or be my stupid villain voice. <laughs> JCC AOL says, villain line, I prefer a real villain to a false hero. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> so much pressure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I've got the giggles. Okay, okay, okay. I prefer... Oh, let's do... I prefer a real villain to a false hero. <laughs> okay, I've embarrassed myself enough. Thank you guys for being here. It's hot. I gotta get work done. I'll see you all next week. Same bat time. Same bat channel. You know the drill. Next week, Tuesday... 12 p.m. EST. I love every single one of you. Thank you so much for your time, for being here today with me. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.